so the next chapter is kinetics. This chapter, I, I know you haven't seen this in this class before, and this is chapter 14, as it says here. Uh, kinetics, I, I have a flow chart for. On the camera, I have no idea if you can read this, and I guess that's too bad. But you kind of look at this. I'll turn the lights down low so it's a little easy to see. Uh, for the rest of you, you can get this on the website. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is make our way through this flow chart. Uh, we're going to start with the terms and then reaction rates. Kind of the way you see on the left hand side here. Uh, and then we're going to make our way through what's called integrated rate laws. Uh, the rate constant, we'll, have seen that we'll see the rate constant all over the place. Reaction mechanisms and kinetic theory. Uh, this is a very mathematical chapter. So there's a lot of equations involved. If you like equations, then we're coming back to your chapters. The previous chapters have been all conceptual. Uh, there's going to be some natural logs. I will speak vaguely of this thing called integration, but we won't do it in the class. Uh, but if you know what an integration is or a differentiation, some things may feel a little easier. But this is all about reaction rates. So, so far, thus far, we've only talked about energetics of a reaction. Is a reaction energetically favorable or not? Does the equilibrium lie on one side or the other? This is going to tell us how fast a reaction will happen, which we haven't talked about before. For example, the diamonds that you're wearing in your earrings and in your teeth and everywhere, <laughs> those are naturally decaying right now to graphite. Okay? However, and that's energetically favorable. However, kinetically, it's extremely unfavorable. That's why we expect in our calculations for in our Earth to be a, have a lot more diamonds. But we don't find as many diamonds as we should because over a long time those diamonds have uh, decayed, if you will, into graphite. Okay? Uh, so reaction rates are all over the place. This is why we use refrigerators so that your food does not decay as fast as it could. Since most of you are college students, you leave your food in your refrigerator for months and years at a time. You come back and there's things growing in it. But that would happen a lot faster if you did not have a refrigerator. Another place we see reaction rates is in biology. So enzymes or catalysts accelerate reactions. Enzymes are fantastic because where uh, we might mechanically or elect electrically work at like 5 to 20 percent efficiency, Enzymes work at near 100% efficiency. They're amazing, very amazing. And enzymes are so smart, whenever, we'll do a calculation of this at the end of the chapter, whenever an enzyme uh, finds itself there's too many products and we're too rich in products and it doesn't want to waste its energy making more products, it will act actually bind to the substrate and things around it to slow down the reaction and cause it not to happen until those products are used up, and they'll start making more products. So it, it, it's very, quote, intelligent that way, knowing what to do when there's an energy-rich state. So kinetics are everywhere, and they're really important uh, for us figuring out, okay, how fast is something going to happen? 